I want to take a look at something in John chapter 5. We've covered it. We've skimmed through John chapter 5, but we really haven't spent a lot of time there, which is kind of a shame because John chapter 5 is a theologically rich uh, chapter. And I want to start that I want to show you a few things or just see if we can observe a few things that's coming out of this passage and see if we can kind of make a connection as to what's happening. We'll pick up in verse 18. Obviously, we are starting in the middle of something because it starts off by saying, for this reason. Uh, and it starts off with dia tu, tu ta. Uh, and so we have this, this, this connecting. It starts off, matter of fact, the verse with the, with a preposition. For this reason, um, for this reason, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him. We got to go back a little bit and find out what the reason was. Because he not only was breaking the Sabbath, but also was calling God his own father. And what do they equate that with? Making himself equal with God. So here we see that they have an issue with Jesus's identity. Uh, the deity of Christ is an issue with them. They don't like that. And we see this before. And so going further, and we're going to make this kind of connect together at the beginning of this verse, uh, prior to this verse, and then after. Therefore, verse 19, Jesus answered and was saying to them, truly, truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself unless it is something he sees the father doing for whatever the father does. These things the son also does in like manner. And oh, by the way, and interestingly enough, they get this too, that what the what the son is doing is also what the father is doing. So you're saying you're doing what only the father can do. Keep that in mind. So going back to it, verse 24, the father loves the son and shows him all the things that he's is doing. Now, he's making this point that the father loves the son. Wait a second. What about us? Well, no, the father loves the son. He's making himself, Jesus is making himself distinct from everyone else. For the father loves the son and shows him all the things that he himself is doing. And the father will show him, that is the son, that is Jesus, greater works than these so that you will marvel. What do you all think he's speaking of these greater works? Well, the greater works is what he brings up in John chapter 14. And he says that greater works you will do that I, because I go to the father. Well, what is he speaking of? Well, obviously this is the coming of the Holy Spirit, which is going to be for them to finish or to complete or to carry forth what, what the work of the son is. And that is bringing people to him. And notice what he says. He says, for just as the father raises them, we know he's speaking about salvation because what he says, just as the father raises the dead and gives them life. Now here he is. He's equating what he does with what the father does. Again, making himself equal. So Jesus is speaking about salvation while at the same time speaking about his deity, him being God, because only God can do these things. For just as the father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the son also gives life. Now, I want you to notice something that's pretty important what we're looking here. I think this is vitally important to see what Jesus is saying. He's not just now, he's going a little bit, a little bit further. He's going one step further to make it clear I'm not just some uh, someone on a mission. I'm not also just a kind of a gopher. I'm just not some emissary. I'm not some uh, sent one. I am God. Look what he says. Even so, the son also gives life. Let's pull it up over here. He says, even so, the son also gives life. Also, now remember we, talk, we said before that this word Kai didn't always mean and. It can mean and but it can also mean also, even so, or namely. In other words, drawing a line between the two, equating what's happening, what in this verse, with the next verse. So he's equating what's happening. He says, so even so, the son, now this is important, the son whom he desires to make alive. This is important. The son is giving life. This word right here, uh, zoe poe, is makes alive or gives life. So the father is giving life. This is also, this is also how the son um, whom he desires is also making alive. This Greek word here, uh, zoa poe, is who the son is also making alive. Zoa poe, which is he is choosing whom he wants to make alive. So the father is making alive. It's the son also who is just like the father. Even so, the son also gives life. And this word in the English gives life doesn't quite do the point, doesn't quite do the job 
or, or conveying what he's saying in the Greek. He is saying that he is the one that's making alive who he desires, whom he chooses, whom he wishes. So the ones that are being made alive, that he's making alive, not just raising, but making alive, are the ones who he chooses. Who is he making alive? The ones he chooses. For not even the father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the son. Wait a second. So not only is he making them alive, he's also raising them from the dead, but he's also judging as well. All of these things have been put in the hands of the son. Wait a second. These are things that only the only the father, only God can do. But the son is doing these things. So all will honor the son, even as they honor the father. He who does not honor the son does not honor the father who sent him. And so his point is, ladies and gentlemen, there's more to the picture. There's more than what meets the eye. I am him. I am God. And so when you think about what the father is doing, think about also what the son is doing. And what is the son doing? The son is the one who's also choosing who to make alive. Well, wait a second. In the very next chapter, in chapter six, who the son chooses to make alive, aren't those the very same ones that the father gives to the son? Yep. So here we see kind of how they're working in concert. The father brings to the son, the son keeps him forever, but it's also the son who makes them alive, whom he chooses. So the father chooses and the son chooses. Yeah, how could that be? Because the son is God. The father obviously is God and so too is the son. And notice what he says again, he goes on further. He says, truly, truly, I say to you that he who hears and he's using the, the, uh, the present active indicative, I'm sorry, the participle, uh, the one that's hearing and the one that's believing again, that's how he always describes us as believers or how he most often describes Christians, those who are in a, a constant state of believing, entering into the state of believing continuously, uh, the believing one who sent me, whoever it is that's, that's believing, hearing and believing him who sent me has eternal life. Now, see how he says it, how he puts it, they presently at present tense, they have life into the ages. That's also important. Zoane, Ionian, they have life uh, into the ages or life to the e eternal and into judgment, this eyes crescent into judgment, they will not go. This is important. This speaks about a lot. Jesus is saying an awful lot here. He's saying into eyes crescent, into judgment, uk erkatai, they will not go, but Medebacon, they have already, all, this is perfect tense, already, this is a completed action in the past. So in the past, they've already passed ek to uh, thanatu, which is out of or from death, into life. So they've passed from, so they've already passed from death and already passed into life. These things have already happened. They've already gone this direction. And so he's making a lot a huge theological inference. He's making a huge statement here. Now, why are they bothered? Well, let's go back to verses uh, 21. For just as the father raises the dead and gives life, even so the son also gives life whom he wishes. Now, Jesus is making the point that I can do what I want to do. I can choose to save whom I want to save. I can make this decision. Well, wait a second. Well, remember, that was the issue that they were upset with him previously. We start off in the middle of the sentence in verse 18, but let's go and see what was happening prior to verse 18. Remember, we start off, it says, for this reason, therefore the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him. Why? Because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was also calling God his own father, making himself equal with God, equating himself with God. Well, what was it that Jesus did? Jesus had the audacity to heal someone on the Sabbath. Let's go to verse 10. So the Jews were saying to the man who was cured, it is the Sabbath and it is not permissible for you to carry your pallet. Now, first of all, think about how silly that is. It's not, you're not allowed to be healed on the Sabbath, <laughs> says, uh, says them, says you, you who are not uh, uh, incapacitated like I am. He says, not, it is not lawful permissible for you to carry your pallet. But he answered them, he who made me well was the one who said to me, pick up your pallet and walk. They asked, who is the man who said, pick up your pallet and walk? But the man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus slipped away while he, there was a crowd in that place. 
Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, Behold, you have become well. Do not sin anymore so that nothing worse happens to you. Why is Jesus making these statements? Well, let's go back a little further. Uh, Jesus says that he, he speaks about his condition that he's in. He's been in, in this condition for 38 years. Now, does this mean that this man had a particular sin? Well, let's go and see. He says uh, a man that there was there, he was ill for, for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had already been a long time in that condition. He said, do you wish to be wet, to made well? I'm sorry, to be made well. The sick man asked, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. Uh, Jesus said, verse eight, uh, get up and pick up your up your pallet and walk. And immediately the man became well and he picked up his pallet and walked. So it's like a good, a good job. He has done what Boy Scouts want to do. He has done a good deed. And so now he's coming back up and he's telling him that make sure as he finds him that you do not sin anymore so that nothing worse happens to you now. Is that to say that, that the man's uh, infirmities was caused by sin? Could be. But Jesus says, make sure that you don't sin anymore. In light of what I've done, don't sin um, against what I've done or you are in danger of causing something worse to happen to you. In other words, rejecting who I am and what I've done, uh, there's a penalty for that. But let's continue. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. For this reason, the Jews uh, were persecuting Jesus because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But he answered them, my father is working until now and I myself am working. Oh, so here's the point. Jesus, one, decided to do something on the Sabbath that they thought was un that, that was unwelcome. That they couldn't do. In their eyes, only God can do these things. And so what happens? Well, God does do these things. And so here he is. Not only does he choose whom he, uh, as, as, as the latter verse says, Jesus decides or chooses who he'll make alive. That's also in keeping with him choosing to decide to heal this man on the Sabbath. And that was the issue. Prior to verse 18 and after, Jesus is the one that is making the decisions. Well, in their minds and even in our eyes, who ultimately makes the decisions? Well, God. And so what is Jesus letting us know? That he is God. Not only is he the one that can keep you, that he can save you and keep you saved. He's the one that chooses to make you alive. He's the one. God is the one that brings you to the son. The son is the one who keeps you, but it's also the son who chooses to make you alive. And so you cannot get past how this triune God, the Trinity is, is at work keeping you, bringing you, choosing you, keeping you. And oh, by the way, uh, what's the power by which we are kept saved? Through the Holy Spirit. And so this particular passage, we've only read a few passages, a few verses in this particular verse in chapter five. This just shows how awesome, how powerful, and how the prerogative of God is at rest in the Father as well as the Son, which is why the Jews rightly stated and thought that Jesus was equating himself with the Father. Amen. Amen.